What's up guys, in this video we're gonna be going over FZF. FZF is a fuzzy searcher. We're gonna be going over a few other tools too that kind of augment it. Um, if there's one video that I really think you should pay attention to, it would be this one. This can be integrated in anyone's workflow and it will be useful. So let's begin here by installing some tools. Uh, we're gonna install FZF, but we're also gonna install a few other tools. We're gonna install RipGrep, Universal C Tag, Silver Searcher, and uh, also FD down here. So I may not get to Universal C Tags and FD. I may get to them, we'll see. But I'm definitely gonna be going over FZF and RipGrep and probably Silver Searcher. So this is how you'll install it. Just choose whatever distro. Um, if it's not listed here, there's still a way to do it, but these are the big three that I list. Um, for installing it, it, use your favorite plugin manager. There's two big ones, you know, Vimplug, this is Vimplug, and I think there's like DN that people use. Um, so if you go into Vimplug, you'll notice that, uh, hold up, oh yeah. You'll notice that I also installed Airblade Vimrooter. And Vimrooter, what it does is it makes sure that FZF is looking at a project directory. It, like it has project directory scope. So if you have a .git in the directory, it'll like go all the way up until it finds a .git and it's like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to look inside of. Otherwise, when you start seeding in the files, um, this will just look at the directory and just look down from the directory. But I'm assuming that when you're in a project, you wanna be able to search through the entire project. Um, another thing that we'll be able to do is ignore like anything in your git ignore. So if like you have a big ass node modules, folder and you want to ignore all that stuff and it's in your git ignore well rip grep and all that stuff will ignore it as well so we already have that stuff installed the other thing will be to the other thing you'll need to do is add a configuration so we'll go into plug config that's where i keep all my configurations and it's in fzf.vim right there so that's where i add all of this configuration and this is basically all of these commands are just found directly off of um the wiki from from uh, June Gun, uh, which he has a lot of great tools. You should really look into a lot of them, as well as a few other commands that I found just kind of scattered throughout the internet and stuff like that. So, um, yep, these are the links to the software that's found in this blog. So if you want to go check out FZF, RipGrep, Universal C Tags, the Silver Searcher, or FD, you can go check those out just by clicking these links. Um, and we'll go into some of that stuff later. But for now, let's check out them. So let's open init dot, whoops, where are we right now? Yep, nvim init dot vim. All right, so let's start searching. The first one we'll do is just regular FZF. And regular FZF, uh, if you're familiar with FZF, you know that it kind of just searches for things, right? So this one will look through like your docket. It's not configured to, to ignore that, I guess. And then, like for instance, we're in init.vim right now, but maybe we'll want to go to like um, syntax.vim. All right, and now we're in syntax.vim. So that's already pretty cool. I think that's enough to augment a lot of people's workflow and be super, super helpful. But we're going to go a lot of steps further here. So files, that's the next one. So, okay, files. Now we get a preview to the right. And it's the same files, right? So it's all the same files. Um, so maybe we'll open COC settings and we can see the file preview over here, which is nice. All right, so now we're in here. But now the cool one that I really like is RG. Uh, this is RipGrep, right? So what RipGrep's gonna do for us, or at least the way we have RipGrep configured here is gonna do for us, is we're gonna look inside of files for strings that are already there, right? So I know that somewhere in, this, in these directories, right? I know that Python exists and it just found it, but it didn't just find it for like a directory or something like that. It found it inside of a file. So I know that it's right there and we were already in that file, so it's less impressive, but let's look for something else with it. RG. Let's look for, um, hmm, let's look for syntax again. So syntax, all right, it's finding syntax not only in the directory, you can see in blue there that it's finding it in the directory, but as we go down, all right, now it found it inside of a file. So it found that string inside of a file in one dark. All right, and that's where I turned syntax on for my theme. So it brought me directly to a line here. So you can see this being really useful. Like imagine you have to-dos or fix-me's or whatever uh, scattered throughout a giant project. 
well, this thing's super fast and you'll be able to find all of your to-dos really fast. Or like a specific line of code that you can barely remember what it kind of looked like. Well, you can just fuzzy search for it. You don't even have to type in all the right characters. All right, so that's probably my favorite one. So I wanted to get it out of the way because I find that one pretty much the most impressive, but there's other cool ones here too. So let's do beelines. And let's see what beelines gets us. I think it's like that, yep. So beelines, imagine you had a giant file. This one's not very big, that's 25 lines, right? But imagine you had a giant file. Say it's like a thousand lines long and you wanna search for a particular string, maybe to-dos again, who knows, right? You can start typing it in, color, right? And so these are all the lines with color on them. And you can see them lit up as I'm going through the list. So set term, GUI colors, and then there I am. I'm at the bottom. Now you'll notice that I have a bunch of buffers open. Okay. And that one only searched through that buffer. But what we can do is we can type lines at the bottom. And then we can search through all the buffers that I have open. So I know that, um, I don't know, init.vim probably has fzf in it. And there it is. Right, so I knew that was there, and there I go. I found FZF, so that was lines. Um, history, so let's do uh, history. So all of your command history, if you do colon, history, colon, all right, this is all of your history. So I have, I guess, 107 things that I've been running, and I can look through all of my history for different uh, commands that I've ran. Let's see what else. Um, there's also a silver searcher that's built in here, so AG. And you'll get a similar thing to um, similar thing to I guess the rip rep, right? So we'll look for like I don't know, uh, uh, we'll say mouse, right? And this is somewhere I guess somewhere it's found mouse, but it seems like this may have uh, looked inside of um, a directory that a directory that is is like supposed to be ignored. It seems so. That's something. Uh, that I don't really use AG as much as I use RG, or at least the way that I have them configured. Another one is gonna be buffers. So you can search through all your buffers, and here you go, like this is every single buffer that I had open. So imagine I didn't have this tab line up here at the top, imagine you don't want that. Well, here's a cool way to search through your buffers really fast. Because you can, you know, you can map these to really useful hotkeys. I'm just showing you what the commands are that you would map to hotkeys. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I really wanted to go over with Vim. I think that's that really covers most of it. But there's other cool things that we can do and I really feel like it would be a shame if I didn't go over them, right? So I use eShell, uh, maybe use Bash. And if you read more, you can, I put a link to uh, the Arch Wiki to explain more about this stuff. But if you use, and that's where I got these, that's where I got these lines from, right? Like I didn't pull them out of nowhere, right? So if you use bash, you can set your key bindings and completion in bash. Um, and you can also do the same thing with Z shell and then they have something for fish too. So what we'll do is go back. And this is for your Vim, R or not your Vim RC, your like Z shell RC or your um, bash RC or whatever, right? Or fish RC. Uh, so we'll set those and I'll open my RC really fast. Jump to the bottom. So you'll set those down here at the top. You can source them, right? And so now you'll have completion and you'll have the key bindings. So what are key bindings in this sense? All right, so key bindings are, there's basically three of them. So there is, the first one I'll go over is your history. So you'll do control R and it'll go through all the history that I've ran recently. So I know I've been opening NVim lately on things and here's all the things I've ran with NVim lately. So if you have one super long command that you can't remember all the time and you don't feel like mapping it to something and you know, you're lazy and you wanna just grab it out of your history, this is a great way to do that. Another thing you can do is I have a utility called what I got on my machine and essentially what that does is it runs all the command, it runs uh, like a search command on all the packages that I have installed. So I just pipe that into FCF and here we go, so here's everything I have installed. So let's see, do I have Discord installed? There it goes, right? Do I have Docker installed? There it goes. So you can just see all the stuff. You're just wondering like, I don't know, I have like a 162 packages. I don't know if I have something installed. What are all the Bluetooth utilities that I have installed? Start typing blue. All right, so the next thing that I'll go over is that's, that's the that's that one. There's two more key commands here. So there's control T 
and control T will essentially just like take us through like it'll just like search for files I think and search for directories and stuff I don't use control T that much but I think it would be useful um, in other ways and maybe other workflows uh, then there is alt C alt C is really cool and you could see if like you could definitely think of cool ways to replace change directory or CD with this stuff right because it's finding all of the directories that I can CD into right now so maybe I want to CD into my blog well there's my blog that fast and I don't need to remember where it is that I don't need to remember where it is it's in like repos or I have it cloned somewhere else or whatever so I could just click on it and here I am here's every single blog topic that I have so I'm in there like faster than <laughs> like it's crazy right the last thing I'll go over is from the arch wiki if you look at the bottom of the arch wiki here if you're on arch then you can run these like pretty cool commands um, and I, I got one to work with the uh, AUR as well so it, there's a small bug in it but alright so the first thing you're gonna want to do is run this and I already ran it so I'm not gonna run it but essentially this will just you know update you so you don't run into an error or you don't um, you're not gonna be missing packages in the next command so we can actually look through all of the packages that are in uh, like in in um, in Pac-Man, right? Like you can install through Pac-Man. So if I wanted to look for, I don't know, Firefox, here's everything with Firefox, right? Or Fire Jail, who knows, right? Who knows what I want to install? But I can just start typing it all in and getting it. And so this is just with um, this is just with Pac-Man. So that's going through all the stuff you have with Pac-Man. Now, if you're really you know adventurous, you can search through the entire AUR with this command and it takes a little bit longer and I guess there's 74,000 things up there but say we want to start searching for Spotify alright now well we can search for Spotify you can press enter and it'll start to install it and I think um, there's definitely more you can do I don't know what I'm doing here but hold up <laughs> there's definitely more that you can do um, with these commands like those are just two like weird utility commands and I just feel like um, my brain is never going to be good enough to <laughs> think up all the cool things that I can do with this tool. But if you have any good ideas, definitely comment below. Um, I'm definitely interested in working this thing, this tool, way further into my workflow. Um, if you're interested, here is the FCF article on the ArchWiki with the cool package commands. They're also on my blog. Uh, here's a link to, I'll probably put the link to, uh, well, his link's already in my blog, so you can just run over to there. June Gun puts out a lot of awesome software for Vim, so you should definitely support him, give him a star. I don't know why I've never started this. Um, yes, yeah, so you can check that out. And then also you can check out the development for this uh, NeoVim config that I'm working on. Uh, if you have any cool ideas, you know, feel free to put in a pull request. Um, but if you want to start or fork it, I'd appreciate it. So make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.